All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to Games Education. This is a Patreon patron request video, and um, if you don't know, I have a Patreon. I do, um, and I have three three membership tiers for my for my Patreon. The first tier is just a kind of thank you tier. Um, if you like my videos, if you have learned from them, if you appreciate the the kind of work I do, and you'd like to say thank you, then um, you can just donate five dollars to me, and I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and your thanks. The second tier is a ten dollar membership, and this allows you to make um, game video requests, which is what this one is. Time and resources permitting, uh, you can make one video request per month, and if I have the game, then I will try to make that for you. And then the the third membership tier is $25 and this gets you a guaranteed video made for you per month and it also gets you a one-on-one -on -one teaching or chatting session um, about the game of your choice as long as I know the game and of course you know is it, is supporting the work I do so if that's something you're interested in I will put a a link to my patreon in the in the description of the video that being said, this video is for Bobby. Bobby is a tier 2 um, membership of my Patreon, so big thank you to Bobby. really appreciate the support. And what Bobby wants is, he wants me to have a look at um, how he plays Rapana in a game against a very hard AI. And he has a few questions that he'd like me to, to answer as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a, a look at his division build first and make some comments on some things that I think work well or some things that maybe I would change. And then after that, we're going to watch the replay. And I will try to look at some of the questions he asks um, while we watch the replay. Um, have a look at the deployment, some of the force compositions, how some of the units are used, and whether they were used well or whether we can use them in a different way for better effect. And then after that, I'm going to play against the same AI, very hard, same division on the same map, um, with the same division, with probably some changes, and then playing it comment on you know some of the questions he asked. Uh, as I play, and so we can really fully answer the things that Bobby wants to know. So that being said, let's let's have a look first at the the, the division build, and I'll go through all of the the tabs first. So recon tab, okay. I also take the Rajakari, the the double sniper, the Sissy, yes, double sniper in B. Usually, I would take this one also in A. The reason for that is then we get four double sniper squads on motorbikes that we can get into what would you call it like these aggressive um transport sniping positions now every map doesn't have four available some just have two but some have three and some do have four some even have five and so you can't you can't use all of them on every map but on the maps where you can use them and you can get the, these four double snipers into these really strong, aggressive positions, you can get a, a nice immediate advantage from that. Now, the one thing missing from this for me is the, the Bathy and the, the Sissy Kev. This division, Rapana, doesn't really get much in the way of um, tanks. And so bringing this uh, Bathy is most of the time pretty much um, a must-have, in my opinion. As we only get one one tank slot, and it's only T26s, which are pretty bad and pretty slow too, the, the Baf C here, being at least a, a reasonable speed of um, 55 kilometers an hour, let me just move my camera so you can see that. So it's 55 kilometers an hour road speed, um, we compared to the T26B, only 31 kilometers an hour. Now they have the same kind of gun, and the reason speed is important here is the Baf C is almost twice as fast as the T26B. And when you want things to arrive on time, or you want things to at least arrive to support infantry, if we have a look at the, the infantry support truck, support truck, transport truck, 
and it has a road speed of 75 kilometers an hour. Now, that's also much faster than the Bath C's 55 kilometers an hour, but it's more than twice as fast as the T26's 31 kilometers an hour. So if you're trying to use T26s to support your infantry, they're going to be arriving late. And in those cases, then they might be arriving too late, too late to provide the support that you want them to do. And so in that case, that's why I find the, the Baf C to be superior in some cases. The other advantage it has, of course, is that it's a recon vehicle, so it can actually spot things, whereas the T26B cannot. Most tanks these days are pretty blind, and so they can't spot things for themselves to shoot unless it's, unless it's almost at point-blank range in some cases. So that makes it also quite a versatile vehicle. So I, I would pretty much always take this. In the infantry tab, we have, let's see, Jakari, Ratsu Pioneeri, Ratsu Vaki, Sioxi Pioneeri. Okay, so I would say this is a little bit um, CQC heavy. This is a CQC unit with a flamethrower. This is CQC with a grenade. This is CQC with a Molotov. And that leaves us only with six line infantry, which I think is a little bit low for a for a infantry based division. So I would probably take one of those out and um, replace it with a Kivari, which are here. Get plenty of these, pretty cheap. Nine man squad, six rifles, and an LMG. And the reason we want to take both kinds of infantry is is that they they excel in different conditions. And if you're trying to use CQC infantry in a situation where the line infantry would do it better, and you're against line infantry, and then that's going to be a situation where you're coming out on the wrong side or you, you're being quite inefficient and you're losing units and you're losing engagements rather than winning them and you know the same applies the other way if you're trying to use line infantry in cqc engagements <clears throat> against cqc infantry well you're just going to have a really bad time no line infantry is going to do anything against flamethrowers and grenades that's for sure in B phase, two more CQC and one line infantry. Okay, I mean, I, I run the same in my, in my own, although with different choices. And then C phase, one line infantry and one leader. I mean, usually I would like to bring one line and one CQC for every phase, especially playing balanced. But um, I think with the, with the amount of CQC infantry already in the division, Probably you might be able to get away with not having one in C, but it's a, it's a little bit tenuous, I would say. I'm not sure what the the leaders in C would really bring to the table if you have no um, infantry for them to support, right? Because these the leaders are support units, so we bring them to to make other infantry units stronger. But if we don't have other infantry units, there's nothing for them to support, and so they're kind of, you know, a moot point. So in this case, and if we if we keep everything else, I would at least take out these these leaders and just replace them with um, with just another Jakari. C phase, we can take 27 of these. Um, I would probably take these at one vet as well. And the reason for that, one vet, sorry, no, zero vet. The reason for that is you know if we're playing balanced then really our focus is on c phase c phase is where we do our business that's where we're strong and so that's where we want to have most of our units so if we're playing a balanced income then we want to have a lot of units in c because then that's how we overwhelm an opponent that does not have uh, the balanced income type if you play against vanguard or maverick then and you can survive to to C phase, then having this this huge amount of amount of units in C phase along with this superior income will just allow you to to totally overwhelm uh, your opponent even just with quantity, which can be a quality all of its own. Um, tank tab is one unit. I mean that's the only option we have. Um, support tab. I wouldn't take two supply trucks. 
probably you're not going to to get use out of two two units or two cards of supply trucks unless you're playing a really long game maybe in a 4v4 definitely in a 10v10 you could get use out of you know two cards of supply trucks but um in a 1v1 i think probably not um the the commander okay is i would say flexible personally i don't take it i do like to take the the infantry gun this is a a really nice uh 1500 meter range uh, soft target zone control so you know we we don't actually have in Rapana any units that can fire to 2000 meters or i think even even to 1750 so we we want to control from 1500 meters and in basically and so this is a really solid choice for soft targets that are coming in from 1500 meters whether you want to target anti-tank guns um anti-air units, infantry, which would be the, the target most of the time. It is called uh, an infantry gun. So, I mean, whether we take these, um, whether we take the Maxim or not, I would at least remove the supply truck and uh, throw the infantry guns in for sure. Absolutely. And the anti-tank tab. Our opponent doesn't really get um, very good anti-tank um, guns the best one in the the anti-tank tab uh, being this one the pack 50 or pack 38 sorry it's called 50 millimeter but it's called a pack 38 um, it gets ap shells with a hundred millimeters of penetration at 1500 meters range which is not amazing but it will do the job against a lightly armored medium tanks at least and if you can get flanking shots, perfect. It does come with four APCR shells with 150 millimeters of uh, penetration, but only a thousand meter range and only four of them. And they only do three damage compared to the AP shell six. So you would have to shoot Penet and penetrate well sh shoot and hit accurately and also penetrate twice compared to doing the same thing with just one ap shell so these four apcr shells are actually only worth two ap shells and you know they're going to get used up really quickly if you are using them and then you would need a supply truck if you want to replenish them but most of the time hopefully you're not getting units coming into that thousand meter range anyway hopefully you can prevent that most of the time so lati in a the the anti-tank rifle squad best anti-tank rifle squad in the game always take them they're amazing um panzer Shrek squad in a yep i agree i would probably also take another one of these uh panzer Shrek squads this is the 10 man squad so these are these are nice in that being a 10-man squad, they're much harder to kill, and they're also much harder to lose randomly to things. You know, they can take a tank shot to the face and not just be deleted from the map. Um, they can take some mortar shells and still be fine, you know? Whereas the the two-man uh, Panzer Shrek squad, they can't really do that so much. So you have to utilize these guys more like a scalpel, where you could use these guys more like you know a bit of a a spoon <laughs> or a hammer i guess but they they can actually take some hits while also running forwards to, to get that panzer shrek off so i'd usually take these in um, b phase and we get eight of those then the anti-air tab actually is pretty much the same as my own so no comments there uh taking the the 40 mil in b because it's really nice. It's the best anti-tank gun, sorry, anti-tank, anti-air gun that Rapana gets. And we'd rather have more of them, but also we don't want to go through 20 minutes of not having any good anti-air. So that's why I take them in B phase. We could take them in A phase, but then it's only two at one vet or three at no vet. And I'm not really sure that's enough. So B phase, we could get six or four with one vet. I think the one vet does give it some nice um, 
accuracy and rate of fire improvements just to give it a better chance of suppressing and um, even killing other planes. And then the other two options are the only things we really have left, which are the, the double 20 mils um, in A and C, C phase, just in case you really need that extra anti-air. So this is, this is almost exactly the same as my own uh, anti-air tab, or if not exactly the same. So nothing to change there for me. Um, the artillery tab. Okay, there are a few things that I would change here. I think we probably already have enough leaders in the, the infantry tab already, such that we probably don't need these these leaders here in the artillery tab. And we're missing the best, the best unit that Rapana gets. This 155 millimeter heavy howitzer. It comes with a radio. You can take four of them in A phase. This is a unicorn unit. Unicorn means very specific and special to the division. And this is my favorite unit in Rapana. I always take it in A phase. And maybe I don't always buy it in A phase, but having it there available is really nice. And this is this is one of the units that actually makes Rapana kind of special. Because most of the time people don't expect to start having their units explode on them from very from things that are shooting them from very far away because these 155 millimeter shells are big and they do a lot of damage and with the radio you can utilize the the sissy squads who also have a radio or you can utilize your leader units who have a radio to give yourself this kind of laser pinpoint accuracy with these huge caliber artillery guns. And so they they pretty much don't miss when you do it like that. And so having these 155 millimeter shells land on your, your infantry, your anti-tank guns, your anti-air guns, even your tanks, these things will take out tanks. And you you don't see it coming because there's no unit revealed to you. There's just a shell flying through the air and suddenly a big boom and no more unit for you. So a lot of the time these things can hit and kill things or at least hit and damage things uh, before your opponent even realizes that something is happening. Really, really nice unit, always take it. And compared to these um, 83 millimeter artillery, I think these things just don't really do what we want them to do. If we want to use smoke, we can use the, the mortars better, I think. If we want to suppress some units uh, with some HE barrage, the mortar can probably do that better as well. So I would definitely take out this, this 83 and throw in the 155 every time. This unit is amazing. Just use it. Just try it. It's a little bit expensive, but if, as long as you can get some points spare, this thing wreaks havoc. Amazing unit. Off map in B, I agree. And the these units actually these are these are not howitzers. These are not artillery units per se, although they are. They technically are. You can use them like that. What we want these units for in Rapana is their heat shells. 160 millimeters of penetration and 12 damage. Being a heat shell, that means they don't lose penetration no matter what range it is. Other anti-tank guns with their AP shells, their penetration value goes down the further the shell flies. So it might say 100 millimeters of penetration, but at maximum range is maybe 60, meter, 60 millimeters of penetration, quite low. Heat shells, on the other hand, they do not lose any of their penetration value. So what that means is, with 12 damage and 160 millimeters of penetration, if this thing hits a tank, that tank is dead. Pretty much is dead, unless it actually has more than 160 millimeters of armor, in which case it has a chance to deflect. Um, but if it penetrates, no tank has more than 12 HP. So you, you shoot a tiger with this and it hits, it's a dead tiger. One shot, one kill, dead. Panther, dead. Sherman, dead. Uh, T-3485, dead. And so 
because Rapana doesn't have any good anti-tank guns or any high penetration anti-tank guns, we use the 122mm heat shells on this howitzer as our anti-tank guns instead. We don't use it as artillery because like I said, the 155mm with the radio will do that so much better than uh, this 122 millimeter ever could. And the difference in price is not so big either. 90 versus 115 is 25 points. And the the air tab, okay, we take the, the rocket biplanes in A, same for me. PE2 in B, same for me. I think I take my own PE2 or the second card in C phase just for, for one more. And then JU-88 in C, okay, I think I, I think I take my JU-88s in B, maybe. Blenheim's in A, nice heavy bomber, and pretty cheap too, nice for, so, for taking out certain units that you can't quite reach. Uh, there is also the, the JU-88 with the 28 50 kg bombs. This is really nice for pinning down groups of infantry because you get this this nice spread of a lot of uh, lower um, weight bombs. The recon plane, I don't personally take. Um, I guess you can take it if you want to. Overall, I would say this is fine, but I would like another bomber in B phase, and I'll probably lose the, the recon to take that bomber in B phase. Okay, so th that being said, that's, those are my thoughts on the, the actual division build that Bobby uses. Now let's let's hop into the, the replay. I'm not gonna save these changes. Let's hop into the, the replay and let's let's see how that goes. So where's Bobby? Here we go. So this is on Osha North. Against a very hard AI. It's just 10 speed. And we'll have a look at the game from, from Bobby's perspective. I do like this map. I made a video recently um, about this map called um, Stabilizing the Front Line and Force Composition, where I also used Rapana. So if you'd like to take a look at that, go ahead. That's on my, my YouTube channel. So let's see, let's what's going on here now. We want to put our units on the road to begin with. If we don't put them on the road, then what they have to do first is they have to drive to the road and then start moving the road. Moving the road, moving on the road. And units given the, the fast move or the quick hunt order will use roads to move faster. They, they can only move faster when they're actually on the road. So if we place them outside of the road like this, we're costing ourselves a few seconds. It could be five seconds, it could be 10 seconds, but that's five or 10 seconds in which your opponent can move their units forward to get into a more aggressive kind of position, maybe a better position that then kind of makes it more difficult um, for you to do well. So making sure that we have our units on the road, just in a line, just place them one behind the other in a line on the road. Um, that's a, a quick tip that something we should apply here. Okay, let's see. Now, I can immediately see an issue here. These, these two deployment orders here, first the one going to the left and the one going to the right. If we're close to the front line like this, most of the time your opponent is also going to deploy near to the front line. That's going to be these buildings here, maybe this forest here, maybe this forest here, maybe these buildings here. And so if we are in range and this, this location here is in range of where these units will be. And we have this order that is going off-road. Remember off-road, we move the units move slower in their transport trucks. Moving off-road here is gonna take a long time. 
And so this is going to expose the units to enemy fire as they try to deploy or travel first here before deploying here. And the same here, they have to travel all the way along here before deploying here. A safer option and a better option is to just deploy the unit here and here and then give them a queue move order to where you want them to be. That way they can't get sniped in their transport and that way you know, if there is something for them to shoot at, at least, they can do that and deal with this thing before then moving into the position that you want them to be in. Okay, this is fine. I would usually put one unit in the forest here. This one here, this is going to take a long time for the unit to arrive. It's better if we just go up the road deploy into the forest and then we can move normally and the same here just deploy into the forest and then we can walk them much safer this is a little bit too conservative i think like one of the one of the important things when we are deploying is that our units become available to use as soon as possible and so what that means is we need them to deploy in as little a distance as possible from where they can engage the enemy. Now, if we deploy an anti-tank gun here in the forest, where does it have to go before it can actually begin engaging enemy units and being useful? Let's see. It has to walk up through the forest all the way to here. And that might not sound like a lot, a lot of time, a long distance, but in terms of factoring into the the first engagements which can be very very important the first engagements dictate kind of the tempo of the the first 10 minutes making sure that your unit is available as soon as possible is important so in this case for this anti-tank gun here depending on which road we want it to cover if we want it to cover the roads here then i would deploy it maybe here in the light forest and that way it's ready to start shooting. And if we want to give it a queue order to move over to the heavy forest, we can do that. But at least it's ready. It can see the roads. If something comes, it can shoot. And if there's not, then it's moving while also still being able to cover uh, that kind of zone. Okay, so the sniper in the church here love this positioning this is exactly what i was talking about in the division building side of things having these double snipers available to put into aggressive positions this is one of those aggressive positions and now this sniper is shooting at these soft um, infantry transports we see it already killed one one motorbike here poof there's another one poof what about this this one here boom so that's three kills three kills with this sniper just because we we put it into a nice aggressive position where it's covering these these transport roads that people might want to send infantry um down okay so we've got Rajikari, ratsu pioneeri ratsu vaki seoxi pioneeri so this is three cqc and one line infantry on this part here, we have Rajakari, Seoxi, Ratsuvaki, Ratsuvaki. So two CQC and one line infantry. Um, one thing missing here, I would say, is a kind of an anti-tank option. If your opponent brings tanks down this road here, or into this position here, how are you going to deal with it? Because you won't have anything that has the kind of range you need to to kill that tank and so the tank can kind of exclude you from some zones here although the the ratsuvaki do have anti-tank grenades they are only at 100 meter range which most of the time only works either you know pretty much next to a heavy forest or next to buildings but in some cases you just can't quite reach the tank uh, before it suppresses your unit so this is a, a solid choice, I think, for the pack 38. I wouldn't give it the, the right click and move order. In this case, it can move up here. It can have a target. And even though it has a target, it can see the, the unit and it can shoot it. 
because we've given it the move order, it will instead prioritize moving instead of trying to shoot. In which case, I think it's much better to just always give it a, a Q move order instead. That way, if there is a target it can see, it can shoot at, it will stop first to shoot before then moving if there's nothing to shoot. And let's see, have a look at the... Okay, let's say it's going to be about here. I think this is a little bit too forwards. Most of the time we want to use our, our anti-tank guns to their range. And the pack 38s range is 1500 meters. And so we, we kind of want to position it in the forest where it only sees out to 1500 meters. Because how far it can see is not specific to itself. It also means that units it cannot see, or the range that it cannot see, is also where enemy units cannot see it, and therefore cannot shoot it either. So in this case, if it's 1500 meters, and we press C, and we move our mouse slowly out to 1500, I would say probably about here is fine. This is fine. Because the enemy transports and tanks are still going to use the road. If they want to come down this way, or come down this way into the town, they still have to use these roads and this area here. Although it seems like kind of a, a small cone, it still works just fine. And actually, in some cases, it works better because it's protecting your anti-tank gun from return fire. It prevents it from being shot from over here. It prevents it from being shot from units on top of the hill here. It prevents it from being shot by units that are outside its range over in this direction here. So it, it, it's you know safer and, and more efficient for it in that way. Okay, so here we have um, a good example of what I was saying about the, the deployment and the slow movement. This is a sissy recon squad with a sniper and um, LMG, both of which have a thousand meter range. And if we press C here, these three infantry units are within that thousand meter range. And so this, this sissy squad, if deployed here and Q moved along here, would be firing on these units already, would be damaging them, might be getting transport kills, and so this would be having a, a very solid impact. I mean, I would probably put it here because the 1,000 meter range would benefit it more at something like this, this kind of positioning here. can still see, can still shoot, can't be shot out outside this 1,000 meter range until we move it up a bit maybe, and we want to use it just for recon, then the heavy forest is nice. But for the initial deployment, something like this would be smashing these units right now and fortunately i think these are just flamers so these two transport units are not really in danger at the moment but against different units you could be losing these units which is a problem so this is why we we want to not deploy our anti-tank guns too conservatively like at the back of the forest here and why we don't want to send our our transports on a long off-road journey that is both exposed to enemy units, but also not not utilizing their their effect when they can be utilized. And that's especially true for, for these areas here. This tends to be a a first engagement opportunity in many cases, not always. Depends who you play against or how the AI is playing. But in this case here, you know, if we had deployed the, the sissy earlier, if we had deployed the anti-tank gun here as well, we could have gotten already some kills here and protected these two units as well on their journey to, uh, to this forest here. Same for this double sniper. The double sniper as well could have been deployed here on this corner, in which case it would also have been shooting at these units. And with a double sniper and the sissy, both firing these units would have been dead, absolutely. So I guess something we can we can learn here is that we we give our units deployment orders at the start, and we need to pay attention to whether we need to do something with them. And in this case, even if we, we forget that maybe this kind of deployment order is not the best, if we keep this kind of deployment order, but we, we pay attention, we say, oh, look, sissy, 
snipers, infantry units in 1000 meter range, click on the unit, press U. U is the deploy order, get them out of their transport truck. And once that's done, then they will start firing. So we just, we modify our orders and we modify what our units are doing quickly, like on the go, according to, to what the situation is. And the same can be said here. We, we have an infantry unit out in the open. We have Rajakari who have rifles and an LMG. We have Ratsuvaki who also have rifles and an LMG. Clicking on this unit and this unit and pressing U at this stage would allow them to delete this infantry unit here. This is a four-man squad, so it's probably just got LMGs. I think this this anti-tank gun here is a little bit too too aggressive here. And the reason for that is if enemy infantry units come through this forest, which they do tend to do, they will delete this this anti-tank gun very easily. And while it can get nice flanking shots um, on the road here, because it's so aggressively placed, it's easy for your opponent to take out. So most of the time the we want the anti-tank guns to be a little bit behind something so that they, they still get a nice line of sight. For example, uh, this one here can see down two rows at once, but it's behind the main line and it's easy to, to pull it back and keep it safe if it gets into a situation where it's not doing too well. So the sissy, sissy deploys here and starts firing. The Rajakari deploys and starts firing on the Sapere here. But this, I think, is just going to, to fall back. Will it get the kill? Just get the kill. So, flamer on flamer action. Out comes a plane. Now, this is... We see the, the IL-2M. This actually, this um, 10 kg cluster HE is incredibly weak. This is pretty much just a crappy unit. And it doesn't really do much. And so most of the time, we can actually just ignore this unit. And so in this case, I would not have bought the, the fighter for this, this IL-2. Because it's hard to kill an IL-2, they're quite resilient. But also, this is pretty much just a waste of points um, by the AI. And we can just allow it to waste those points in the air while we strengthen our forces on the ground. So big engagement going on in the center here. Uh, the two 45 millimeter um, anti-tank guns, now with their HE shells, which was was a recent change, they're doing a, a nice supporting job here against these T-34 76s. Kill one, kill two, might be able to kill three. Doesn't quite have the range. So this is this here, this engagement between the 45 and the T-34-76 here is a good example of what I was talking about with the, with the range and placement for units. I thought there was an anti-tank gun there. Did it die already? Anyway, so the 45 mil, what's its range? 1250. We just click on a building. So then we look into the forest and we say, okay, where where can I place a unit where it gets 1250 range? So we just go forwards a little bit and that's probably something like this. Something like this. Maybe a little bit back, a little bit more. It's gonna be difficult to get it exactly. But in this case, if your anti-tank gun is being attacked by something outside of its range, all we do is we fall it back. We either click on it and right click back a bit, or we click on it and press R, and that is the, the fall back hotkey. And just getting into the, the habit of this will actually save you a lot of units. Don't, don't leave units just to fight or just to take hits for free. Just click on them, move them back, or click on them and press R. They will fall back by themselves. And 
but that way they will live to to fight again and you can move them back into position later but you're not giving away uh, a free kill but overall i think this this positioning is fine anti-tank guns covering the open areas is good um, an infantry unit on the buildings here is good sniper in the church is always good infantry in the forest and infantry in the forest but no Panzer Shrek and no Lottie rifle squads here, I think, is an issue. You know, one of the questions is, um, how do you know or make sure that a certain part of the map is stable and can be left alone? And I think really the answer to that is that we, we can't leave a part of the map alone. We can never leave it alone. But what we can do is we can consider all of the different options that an opponent opponent might bring to the table. And then we can make sure that we have answers to those options. So if an opponent can bring tanks, then we need to have an option for taking out tanks. In which case, on this side, the only options available for taking out tanks are the, the Ratsovaki with their anti-tank grenades which are more of a last ditch option rather than a go to option. Another option we have as Rapana are the, the anti-tank rocket planes, but they're not super reliable. They don't always get the kill. They don't always even make the tank fall back. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. There's a bit of randomness involved with how accurate those rockets are. And so if we, we rely on the rocket plane only, sometimes we're going to shoot those rockets the tank is still alive we still have a problem and so in those cases you know we we have one option which is the anti-tank rocket planes but it's not super reliable meaning we're going to need at least a second option and on this side here there aren't any really good positions for anti-tank guns for for looking down this road if we have a look at the the forest here can't get any good lines of sight barely anything this is this is not enough for an anti-tank gun so then our only option left as rapana is a is, is a panzer shrek or we could have um baf c's and t26s in the forest and that way then we could engage in a kind of flanking um attack what i mean by that is the the tanks or well the tank that Rapana gets is the T26B. It only has about 75 millimeters of penetration on its main gun. Same for the Baf C, only 75 millimeters of penetration. Most of the time, um, that's not going to be, those are not units that you want to use for a frontal attack because they have no armor, they will die in one hit. And that penetration um, is gonna get bounced a lot, even at close range, as long as you're hitting the front of the tank. But if you're hitting the sides of the tank, you don't have any of those issues. So if we have, for example, a, a Baf C in the forest here, and a Baf C on the road up here, and a T-3476 comes down the hill, we can distract the, the tank with an infantry unit in the forest here, or in the forest here, and then we bring out one of the Baf Cs here, one of the Baf Cs here, and at least one of them, or both, is going to get flanking shots onto the tank before it can turn and fire at them. You still might lose one of your vehicles, but you will, will at least kill the tank, and that tank is worth more points than your Baf C or your T26. So we can still use them in that way, that is an option, but that kind of thing requires planning and micro, and it requires you to be paying attention, and it's not easy to do. Whereas having just a, a Panzer Shrek in the back that you can just quickly move up and poof, bye bye goes the T-3476. Those are a bit easier to use, I think. So here we have the, the 75mm anti-tank gun shooting at long range, long range, against the T-3476. It's not going to win this engagement. It doesn't have the penetration to do so. In which case, just make it fall back, keep it for another day, let the tank go on its way to a different position, move it back up, let it harass and shoot at the units it can kill, rather than in this case where it's just getting bounced, next shot it dies. 
There it goes. Poof. Bye bye 75 mil. And so here, this this area here, this whole side here, has no anti tank guns. There are only anti tank guns here on this side. They can maybe attack onto this road, but anything that comes down this road, anything that comes down this road, anything that even comes down here, and they don't manage to kill, or if they get taken out, there's nothing on this side preventing tanks from advancing. Not really. And so, you know, this then comes to another one of the questions that Bobby asked, which is, how do you decide when or where to reinforce and with what? And the answer to that is, you pretty much need to have an answer for everything. If, if your opponent has tanks, not every division does, but if your opponent has tanks, then you need to have something available to counter that. You can counter it in many ways. Every division has different tools available to it to do that. But in this case, for, for this division, for Rapana, we have anti-tank guns and we have anti-tank rocket planes, but again, they're not super reliable and any strong anti-air is also going to be an issue for that. So in which case then we, we kind of come down to anti-tank guns and Panzerschrecks. And so utilizing these two forests here with anti-tank guns is going to be how you, how you can at least counter tanks uh, attacking in this area here which is not happening at the moment, which is probably going to be an issue. On the right side here, how do we decide when to reinforce? In this case, the, the answer would be when the line looks thin. And if we only have one, two, three, four, five infantry units, that counts as being thin. I see now that this anti-tank gun has been forgotten a little bit, which is an issue. But we all forget units. We've all forgotten units. So in this case here, these these heavy forests, especially if you're playing an infantry division, the heavy forests are kind of your friend. They, those are the areas where you are strongest. And so if we if we build up our units in these areas, we can really take advantage of our opponent if they try to attack into these areas because we will most of the time have more infantry than our opponent but also our inf infantry will be of a higher quality than our opponent too we just generally have the advantage and so we want to, to take advantage of that I mean in this case this eight units of infantry in this area is just enough I would say at the moment just enough I would like some more, maybe a BAF C, maybe some PTR um, S, PTR D, the anti tank rifle squad, the Lottis, maybe also a Panzer Shrek as well, just in case. And so maybe maybe 10, 11, 12 units here is enough to to counter all of the things you might encounter on this side here. That was a unfortunate loss. One of the the issues on this map with the the pathfinding is if we try to send units here. Um, they won't take this nice kind of safer road here. They will instead take this road, go up through the town here, out into this open area where they will die in a fire. So if we want to deploy units here or here or here, most of the time we just buy them and we click here first, get them to move up this road here, and then give them a second order to come and deploy somewhere over here. So now I guess we can, we can have a look at the, the third question that Bobby asked, which is, what is the, the attention and decision-making loop that goes on during a battle? And the loop pretty much goes like this. You look at one key part of the map, which is the forests here. You look at the second key part of the map, which is the open area here. And then you look at the third key part of the map, which is the forest and also the kind of town here. But not much going on here. So we have a look at this and we say, okay, do I have enough units and are they doing what I want them to do? In this case, I would say, okay, not enough units here. Let's bring two Jakari here. Let's bring two Ratsuvaki here, maybe a Baf C, maybe also a Panzer Shrek at least somewhere here or here. 
Um, is this okay? No, my opponent has a lot of units attacking here. We have tanks coming down. Okay, that's fine. They're moving into a town where I have a Ratsuvaki with anti-tank grenades. Maybe he will take them out. Maybe it will go badly. Maybe I need to buy another Ratsuvaki now. Maybe I need to buy um, an anti-tank rocket plane for something here. Left side, is everything going okay here? Well, I have my infantry in the forest here. Infantry in the forest here. Judging by the the distance from my units to the line here, this is pretty safe as well. So for now, I don't really need to fix this for now. Maybe a Panzer Shrek unit, like I said before, just in case there are any tanks. But otherwise, this is okay. So we deal with the tanks. We deal with this being thin. Also, I would have a unit over here just to prevent units coming down this road for free. Although the there is the, the sniper here. If it's a tank or a half track, oh no, then this this anti-tank gun would also take care of it. So actually this this road is kind of fine, I guess. I would still like to place maybe one unit either in the forest here or here, just to push the the influence line a little bit forwards so that we don't get this kind of inviting bubble here. Whereas this would not be, I think these are already bought actually. So if we were buying these, I would say this is a, a wrong decision. But as these are already bought, bringing them out to the IL-2 is fine. Bye bye, go see the first T-3476 to the Ratsuvaki. Second one as well, it looks like. So this is, these, these tanks are kind of taking care of themselves, to be honest. That's fixed this situation. But then, do we want to be taking care of tanks once they actually reach this town, or would we prefer to take care of them before that happens? I would say before, in which case we're going to buy an anti-tank gun here. And maybe one here as well. This is a, a nice position here, looking down both these roads. And the enemy enemy division is the 44th Guard Strelkovi. So they get T-34-76s and they also get T-34-85s. Now the T-34-85 has 110 frontal armor. And if we remember these, these pack 38s their AP shells only have a hundred millimeters of penetration, in which case they are going to have a bad time trying to kill T-34-85s. So probably at some point we are going to want to use the 122mm um, artillery guns or to at least get one or two of them into position for this open area. Especially this area, this has been a, a large focus of the AI um, and so has this area to some extent as well. So, I mean, this is kind of gaming the AI in some ways and I don't really want to talk about that too much, but let's say if your opponent is focusing heavily on one area then this is also an area where you can you know try to focus on or at least at least try to cover in advance so some mortars going out here uh, one of the options for the mortars is once we see them firing we can drop a beacon on top of it and then we can just send out a bomber to take care of that Oof. Rocket biplane trying to shoot a ZSU. Not the greatest choice. Okay, let's see. Does the Ratsovaki get the T-34? It does. Okay. But I'd say this is, although this worked, this is, this is kind of a last ditch option. We don't want to have the, the Ratsovaki as our anti-tank units. They are a last resort anti-tank unit. We want to have units that are there as anti-tank, you know, specifically for that role. And using planes to take out anti-air most of the time isn't going to work, especially if they are a flimsy biplane. So this is this is a flimsy front line now. Only two infantry units in here. Um, both of them have been damaged. The Rajakari does not have any Molotovs left. The Ratsuvaki is down from 12 men to 5. 
This needs reinforcing here with more infantry. Okay, and this bubble here. So in these cases, if we want to fight in heavy forest, best option for that is CQC infantry. And we have some here. We have the Seoxi Pioneer, we have the Rajikari, both with CQC weapons. Putting one of these units into this forest here would be a very nice solution and you know, would win this fight against the Gavadia DP very handily. Not that the Ratsuvaki are losing, but these units would win it faster and better with less losses. Okay, good. We take this this zone here. Now let's have a look at the, the anti-tank gun and its positioning. Is it taking advantage? Mm, can't really see much there, can it? If we think about this, this positioning here for this anti-tank gun, what do we want it to do? And we want it to prevent vehicles, armored vehicles and tanks from coming down this road. And I would say we don't have to care if they come into this area here. Because what can they do? Where is the objective they want to contest? It's in the forest. Can they come into the forest? No, not unless they want to die a, a horrible fiery death of grenades and, and rockets and things like that. They can't come into the forest. In which case, do we need to protect this? Do we, or is it possible even, to protect this this flag without trying to contest this, this open area? And I would say probably it is. Probably as Rapana against 44th, we have enough infantry and enough infantry strength to defend this objective here without ever trying to fight outside of it. We can keep all our infantry inside the forest here and any time anything tries to come into this area here, whether it be half track or infantry or tanks, we will have a solution very ready to take care of that. SU-152 here. Looks like it's facing the wrong way. 75 mil get a flanking shot. Bounces the, the other shot. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Nice kill. So if I if I was to reposition this pack 38, I would probably put it somewhere a little further back, like here. Where it can still see down this road here, which is something we, we can protect, but it's far enough back that if it needs to retreat it can. And we can still defend this in a in a very efficient way with our infantry. Now this is something that I can comment on. We see the, the Ratsuvaki here engaging the Gavadia DP, both in heavy cover. We actually have another Ratsuvaki squad here that if we just moved 10 meters to the right, would also be able to engage this Gavadia DP, in which case then we can win this engagement. At the moment, 12 versus 8 and almost half suppressed. This is a, a loss for the Ratsuvaki. But just by looking at what we have available, we could turn that around. Okay, yes, re reordering the unit correctly this time to go into here. Good. Okay, there are more infantry units here. That's good too. And we have the, the Lati, the Panzer Shrek. This is too thin though. Again, here, this is a three-man squad, three-man squad. If your units are injured like this, they're, they're, they're less than 75% health. Just buy another one, reinforce it with something that does the same job. It doesn't have to be the same unit. If you don't have any more Seoxi Pioneer, you can buy more Jakari, you can buy more Pioneer, whatever um, CQC infantry unit you want. This is a bad decision. We don't use anti armor piercing rockets against uh, soft targets, they don't do very much, as we saw there. We could just use a Blenheim bomber here. That's actually something I, I haven't seen uh, bought yet, is any of the bombers. We just have the fighters and... Actually, I think my picture is in the way, right? Let me move that. 
moving the camera back and forth. So we actually just have three fighters and three of the biplanes, rocket, the biplane anti-tank rocket planes. So if we want to take out units like these, like the sniper here, like the infantry here, even these gas AA, although it's not a good choice for a heavy bomber because they're so cheap, um, they're only 15 points, so buying a 95-point bomber to take out a 15-point truck is never going to be a good decision. Double rockets on the SU-152, great choice. Bye-bye, SU-152. So, like, overall here, you know, this is, this is not going badly. When I say that, I mean, it's going actually very well. Um, Bobby has the 16-8 the against the very hard AI. And so, you might be asking, what's the problem here? Bobby is obviously going to, to win this, this, this match, right? You would think. Because at the moment, it's pretty solid. But let's see. What we can do here, at least, is spread our units out and buy more of them. Now, if we have points, buy more units. Put some infantry into here, into here, into here, maybe one here, maybe a couple more behind these ones. If we have the option to advance here, we might want to see, can we move units down across the road and into the forest here? And if we can do that into the forest here, in which case, if we can get infantry units into the forest here, we can contest this road and if nothing can come down this road, they're not going to be able to get into this area if they can't get, you know, down the damn road. So then that becomes a very easy and effective defense of this whole area because we're just blocking the entrance to it. Okay, so these, this is what I talked about in the division builder or division building, which is these 122 millimeter howitzers we want to use for anti-tank and not for artillery. And the further they have to fire, the greater their inaccuracy. So this kind of large um, target circle here mostly means that there, there's not much chance of them hitting the target or it will take a lot of shots for them to, to kill the target. And now on this side, we have a T-34-85 coming into a situation where there isn't really much available to take it out easily. There's a Ratsuvaki squad here, but it's one man, which is a little bit, little bit flimsy. It's very easy for a one man to die. Uh, the Lati here, you know, we would want to move back and not just keep shooting and being shot at. But a, a Panzer Shrek just right here would be perfect for taking this out. Or even using the the 122mm in the location here, where you can see down the road, would have taken this out very handily. Now another thing is the, the double anti-air buy here. From what we've seen of the, the opponent, forgetting that it's an AI, is that it hasn't really bought many planes. So do we need these two anti-air units? Most of the time when we, when we buy anti-air, we buy it because our opponent is bothering us with air. And if the opponent isn't bothering us with air, or isn't playing a air strong division, a strong air division, then we probably don't need to buy them. But if we really do want them, then being so far back, they're not really going to be able to do anything. They do have a range 2,500 meters. If we measure, that's about here. So if the opponent bombs this unit or these units here, actually these anti-air units won't be able to do anything. So when we buy them, we at least want to be some short distance behind the front line. Maybe we could have them uh, behind the buildings here. Maybe we could have them on the hill here. And that way, any planes that come out into this area here, the anti-air would be defending these units. 
Okay, two are tanks advancing here. The Panzer Shrek is on the hill. I think it could get the shots there. Ratsavaki kills the T-34-85. Oof. SU-152 takes out the Ratsavaki in one shot. Very strong HE shell. So if we... I mean, one of the questions is, what is the attention and decision-making loop that goes on during a battle? And one of the things that I do, at least, is... Whenever we lose a unit, we get that sound, the sound notification. We get the the text notification over here. And any time a unit dies, we get that sound. We press spacebar. It will jump to where that unit was, and we will see what's happening. So in this case, if we, we see the SU-152 here, and we press spacebar and we jump to it, we would say, okay, SU-152 here, move the, the Panzer Shrek out. It's over here in this corner now. This thing has to cross the road. Which is a little bit too open for a two-man squad. But it looks like it might make it. Hopefully. So in this case, you know, we... If we have two cards of these Panzer Shreks, Then we can at least place them in multiple places around the map. And we don't have to spend time moving them to try and get the kill. So we could keep one up here, and we could have a second squad in the forest here, ready to take out this, this SU-152. And again, this, this now, this decision-making loop is, we, we go around to the main areas and we say, is this strong or is it thin? If it's thin, it needs reinforcing. This is a one-man squad, not worth anything, needs replacing. This is also a one-man squad, not worth anything, needs replacing. We can see that because we look at the Seoxi Pioneer here, it says four. Four men left out of five. Ratsu Pioneer 10, 10 men left in the squad. Here, four, that needs replacing. So we just have a look over here and we say, okay, uh, weak, needs replacing, Ratsu Vecchi. Buy one more, buy maybe two more. Weak, weak, and by weak I mean almost nothing. Definitely 100% needs replacing. Don't have any anti-tank options here. Need something there to do that. Open area here. Lost an anti-tank gun here. Have one left here. Only has one health. One HP left. Needs replacing. Look at the, the anti-tank gun on the hill. It has seven. Okay. Its strength is seven. And it says seven here. That means it's full health. Click on this one. 5 strength, but it has no number, that means 1. Very, very easy to take out, needs replacing 100%. So we have something that will disappear, if somebody looks at it the wrong way. And we have one infantry squad here. This is ready to collapse and lose two objectives. So we, we look, and we look at the numbers, and we say, does it need replacing or not? In this case, yes. Here, 3, 3, 3. They need replacing by the same thing or the, the same role and put them into the forest here. Over this side here, we have the, the Panzer Shrek and the Lati. These are support units, not main infantry units, in which case we need at least three main infantry units into this forest here. And now we have the, the T-34-85s T34, T34 coming, which these light anti-tank guns are going to have trouble taking out. I think this does have a flanking shot. Still gets bounced. Guess the penetration. Bounced again. Bounced again. Look at the side armor. 70 millimeters of side armor against an anti-tank gun that has 75 millimeters of penetration. You do the math. This anti-tank gun, even shooting at the side of the T-3485, is not enough. In most cases, it's not enough. And so in this case, even with two anti-tank guns with flanking shots, the T-3485 is actually winning this engagement. And even the, the rocket planes get bad accuracy on their run, which is unfortunate, and don't get the kill either. It's just falling back. So this is going to be an issue. 
As soon as this P3485 regains its suppression and can advance again, there's nothing here to take care of it. These two objectives have been lost, like I said they would be. And on the left side here, okay, we get the reinforcements for two Jakari. Probably some line infantry would be good as well. In which case here, you know, we get two line infantry to the left, two CQC to the right. Just swap one of each. One CQC on the left side here and one of the line infantry on the right side. This deployment was much, much too early. You can still deploy here by using the road much, much closer. They get into position sooner and they are able to respond sooner as well. These Saperi will take out the Lati. They will also take out the Sioxi Pioneeri. These guys just managed to, to win this one. But in this case now, although we, we have the, the flamethrower squad here, these two line infantry, they're not suited for this kind of heavy forest engagement. We need CQC infantry to do that, and that means Jakari. And that's why we want at least one of these guys over here. Preferably even two of these guys over here with one Ratsuvaki. One Ratsuvaki here, along with one or two Jakari and Panzer Shreks as well. Okay, and here's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 infantry uh, by. So generally, this is, this is what happens when we, we see something bad happening and we don't really know what to do other than to throw points at it. But really, in this, this situation, all we have to do is we have to look at what the opponent has. What is causing this, this balloon? What is the unit type? that we need to kill. And in this case, this is just infantry. A very cheap and easy solution for this would be a heavy bomber, the, the Blenheim, 95 points, and we can go send it to attack one of these two squads here. The bombs will hit both, take them out, and then we should regain some, some control of this, in which case we only need a, a couple of infantry squads to advance and take advantage of that. And we can continue using planes to bomb anything else that is there as well. So really the, the main issue here, if I have to, to identify one main issue that's causing the, the, the loss now is not knowing that we use the 122mm howitzer as anti-tank guns. Because these are the things that would be saving the day at the moment. They absolutely annihilate both tanks and infantry. These 122mm HE shells wreck infantry squads, absolutely wreck them. And when those heat shells hit tanks, bye bye goes the tank too. These are wonderful units. So just knowing that that's their role and using them for that would probably have, have saved the day for this for this match, to be honest. And the second thing that we, we want to look at is just paying attention to squad strength. Here, one man, three, two. This is less than flimsy now. And then reinforcing. In comes T-34, 85. Gets the kill from the Jakari. <laughs> but I think these Saperi might be able to take them out. We'll see. No, they're moving. They're going to die. And here, these infantry are not going to prevent this, this tank. Does the Ratsuvaki get the SU? Yes, it does. Okay. Again, although Bobby used these Ratsuvaki to kill a lot of tanks this game, a lot of tanks, because the AI is not the, the most intelligent, uh, shall we say. It's bad practice. We want to use Panzer Shreks to do that. If we're going to use any infantry to kill tanks, it's going to be Panzer Shreks. And now, as I said before, if we'd had two squads, one Panzer Shrek on, in the forest on this side and one squad in the forest on this side, this, this thing here would not be happening right now. This SU-152 coming in here with nothing to kill it and it's going to kill this Sioxi Pioneer 
in one big boom. Oh, turned. Turned again. Poof. So this is collapsing now. It was flimsy and all it took was a couple of shots and it's it's gone. And the same here, we we don't want to use these anti-tank rocket planes for infantry. We we have the Blenheim heavy bombers for that. The M3A1 Resvedka here could be very easily taken out by the, the Lati, if there was one of them here. And these Jakari squads they don't actually do very well like placed in buildings like this. This is difficult for them to hold. Actually, this position in general is difficult to hold because your opponent can assault it from the forests here, which is very easy for them to reinforce. They can assault it from this side as well. So defending this these buildings is actually really difficult, and most of the time we would just use the forest to do that. Maybe we'll put one line infantry squad into the building here, to try and hold it, but otherwise trying to, to hold any of the other buildings is too easy for, for your opponent to, to shoot it. So the PE2-31 here, this is a 140, 140 point plane against a 15 point uh, half track. Bit of an imbalance between the, the point spending there. I think at this stage anyway, Bobby has way more points than the AI does anyway. I mean, very hard AI gets extra income um, anyway, and they also get extra quantity of units too. But even, even still saying that, I would say Bobby probably has more points than the AI still. It's just knowing which units will counter which things. So this this blob here, what I suspect will happen is any HE shells, any MGs, anything that hits one of these squads is going to apply to all of them. Like if this T-3485 starts shooting at these squads, all of them will start receiving suppression. Okay, and here it goes. Hits one, but we see the suppression bar go up for all of them because they're all clumped together. Okay, again, this Gavardia DP is doing the same thing. Now this one as well. And... Yep, the T-3485 here. Now all of them are suppressed. From just a few hits. Because they're all clumped together. So clumping units is, is never a good idea. Just makes it very easy for your opponent to do this. I guess, again, we're seeing the same thing here, the, the, the big blob, the, the panic buy of my opponent is advancing and I have a lot of points and I don't know what to, to do to deal with it, so I'm just going to buy a lot of points and try to attack with those things. But most of the time, we, we don't need to do that. We, you know, we, we win or lose the game based on the points here on the right side, right? At the moment, the AI is down to almost no points, and Bobby's is still very high. Even at this this stage of the game, he could keep playing for another 20 minutes without losing. And so all we have to do is relax, think about where the AI is going, or where your opponent is or might be going, and then find places to counter that. So in this case, we have a lot of tanks, armored units here, we could bring maybe an anti-tank gun into the forest here and cover the road. An anti-tank gun into the forest here and cover the road as well. And that way, once we start wearing the tanks down, we can then again counter-attack with our infantry once the, the problem has been dealt with. So it's okay to, to let your opponent advance and take territory as long as you just look at the terrain find a step back 
from where you were, where you can then place your units in an advantageous way to then engage efficiently, destroy their units, and once that's done, you can then go and retake the territory. It doesn't have to be a, I'm losing territory, I need it back right now. Just let it go and re redeploy one step back, let the engagement happen where you win that engagement, and then you counterattack and you take it back. And it's all very calm, very relaxed, no panicking, no mass buying of units, just my opponent has this unit, I need this unit to counter it. Once that's done, I can then send these units, because according to the terrain, these are the units that work best in this environment. So in this case here, this is an open area. They have tanks. We'll use anti-tank guns, or we'll use recon and uh, rocket planes. Once those tanks are dead, we'll send in infantry, because that next area there is heavily forested, and that's where they do best. So Bobby surrendered here, and he didn't need to surrender. He could have still taken it back very easily, I think. But it's just, it's just getting into the mindset and not letting the the psychology of the game overwhelm you. And so we can actually see that with the the kills and losses. It's four thousand two hundred kills to one thousand three hundred twenty five losses. So he still had thousands more points than than the than the AI did. Very easy to formulate a way to destroy enemy units and come back from that just as long as you don't give up and just as long as you understand that even going even losing let's say he was up 16 8 at one point and even if he goes back down to 8 16 and he loses eight objectives and that's a lot of territory it doesn't matter all you're looking at is are you killing enemy units and can you counterattack to take it back because we use this these this points bar as a resource you can let your opponent use it up as long as you are taking away their units and you are killing uh, what's a problem for you and you just use this as a kind of extra resource that gives you some time and if you have another 25 minutes left of points to lose you can still use 15 minutes of those while losing as long as you're killing enemy units and then take it all back at the end of the day the game's not over until one of those bars goes down to zero. So let's have a look at the, the kills list. So the, the double sniper with some nice kills at the start here. Ratsuvaki with a lot of kills. T-34, 85, 76, lots of infantry. Rocket plane, yeah, some nice kills there. The two fighters actually getting pretty good efficiency. Jakari, two T3485s, very nice. The PE2, good. The Panzer Shrek here, SU152, T3485, yeah, very nice. And the, the losses. So the SU152, the T3485. Saperi here, got a few kills, T-34, 85, and 85, SU-152, T-34, 85, T-34, 76. So we can see that the, really the only units that got a few kills were the tanks. And from that, we can probably extract that what needs to be done is, is find some way to take out tanks more efficiently. So that's something I'll, I'll try to, to focus on. So now I will, I'll play the same map with my own Rapana division. Okay, so let's go to solo, skirmish, and let's use the same AI division that Bobby played against Ocean North uh, income rate factor, why is that zero? Okay, one, one, seven fifty, meet engagement, capture the flags. Okay. Yeah, let's go.
Okay, and I'm even on the exact same side of the map. Wonderful. Okay, so first things first. Anti-tank guns for these open areas. So one... Remember, when we're placing our units, always on on the road. So I'm going to put one... Where was that nice position I could see down the road? So there's this one here. Is this the same side? Oh, no, this is not the same side. This is the other side. They just look so similar, I thought it was the same. I realize now trying to place the unit here it doesn't get the same, same sight angle. So we can put one here for this road. Maybe... Yeah, I guess this would work. Yeah, something like that. This one, can we see down the road here? Mm, not quite. How about over here? Not quite here. There's a window here, but it's a little bit short, to be honest. It's not great. How about in the center here? What have we got? We've got this, this forest here. Okay, and again, using the the sight key so that we get the range we want. Yeah, so this would cover this this road here. I think fairly well. Yeah, something like that. So that would be another one on the same road, actually. It's going to go and deploy about yeah that's nice actually it gets a little bit on this road as well this road that would cover it quite well so let's put one there let's take the same one let's put it okay and let's make it deploy like I said a little bit early and then we can just Q-move it forwards when we're ready to do that. Okay, and on this side... Can we use this? No? Not very good either. Okay, I think those anti-tank guns will be fine for the center for now. Now, how about the the snipers? There's a church there. So let's get one sniper into the church. What can we do over here? Can we do any sniper shenanigans? We might be able to, actually. If we, if we put something here, right on the corner, any trucks that come up here, there's a chance that we... We snipe them. So let's try that. Oh, this side. I think here is fine. So this side, sniper. What about over here and this road? This is a little bit... I mean, I guess it could work just in case, right? They come down this road. It's worth covering. Just in case, because they're pretty cheap. We'll get them to deploy close to the road. Right about there. This one. Or this forest here. Covers this nicely. We could also put an anti-tank gun here, which would stop anything coming down this road. How about this building? Hmm. Get a sniper into this building here. Am I able to get any trucks that come down this way? So let's let's see if we can do that. These these double sniper placements of the star, these these are all meant to be risky. It's a kind of high risk, high reward thing. So we, we look for places quite close to the front line. That's because the, the motorbikes that they come on are really fast. 
90 road speed. What that means is compared to normal trucks, which are much slower than that, they arrive first, which means they can get into these positions closer to the front line and deploy and then catch other things um, out of place. Oh, that's the idea. It doesn't always work super well, but it's the idea. For this center part here, I'm not going to risk trying to get anti-tank guns into here. I think I'll just go for uh, a Kavari squad. And they're very cheap. If we lose them, no big deal. And for these buildings here, I'm not sure I actually need a unit in, in the building to defend it. But maybe something in the buildings here would be a good idea. So let's send at least one Ratsuvaki just about there. On the left side, now playing to the division strengths, the, the two forests on either side are where we can get the most out of the, the division, I think. The, the open areas are where it's not so strong. But the forests, where we can utilize all of our super good infantry, are fantastic. So this is where I tend to, to focus my points. I'll put a lot of infantry into to both sides here. So on this side here, I'm going to put two Jakari and two, two Rajakari. So let's see. Two Jakari... Actually, two Jakari and one Ratsuvaki, and the same on the left side here. One, two, and one. Let's just take these guys and let's say deploy there. And then these guys, let's say deploy, deploy here. But we're going to watch them. If something happens here on the road, we'll be ready to undeploy them. Undeploy? Ready to deploy them, get them out of the transports, and start fighting if that needs to happen. On this side here, I'm going to want at least one Jakari for each heavy forest and a Ratsuvaki to support. Maybe a Bafsi in the forest here. And I'm going to need some some infantry in this forest too. So let's, let's do it again too. Two Jakari, and got the sniper here. Maybe also a Kavari in this forest would work as well. So let's do Kivari and Jakari one, Jakari two, Kivari one, and in the forest here, same thing. Two, two Jakari. And first one goes here, second one goes here, and one Ratsuvaki in here too. This will cover the road from vehicles. This one covers this part of the road from vehicles. I guess this could also work pretty well. But we'll see. If the AI, or if our opponent sends a lot of vehicles into these areas, you know, then we can consider reinforcing with more units. But one thing I find that we want to avoid is overspending in a in a certain kind of counter. Like if we spend so many points in uh, anti-tank guns in this area, and we think, okay, big open area, lots of tanks, let's put all the anti-tank guns, and then your opponent sends all the tanks down one of the sides then those points are kind of going to be going to be wasted right so we want to try and balance it out and when we see what's happening then we we react to it don't don't over invest in in one kind of thing i might put a lati in this building here Okay, it's 200 points. Could also put a Lati in here. 
and an infantry squad in here could work but not forgetting my my own points about the Panzer Shreks because against the division with a lot of tanks that can become an issue so let's get one in there let's get one in here probably gonna need more in here or at least one more line infantry in the building there and Kavari can fulfill that role most of the time the the difference for me between the Kavari and the Ratsuvaki is the Ratsuvaki do better when they have to move and sometimes engage in close quarters combat because they have the the automatic rifle which can be used under 100 meters whereas the Kavari I find are better for those for those static defensive locations where you're not really going to move them where you want them to sit in a building or at the edge of a forest because they have the the dp28 lmg which can't be used um, under 100 meters so it, if i'm putting units into an area where i want to advance them like through a forest here then i'm going to take the ratsuvaki if i'm putting units into an area where i just want to defend like this these buildings here or this kind of village here then I find the Kavari are usually my, my go-to choice then. So I have a sniper and an anti-tank gun here. Could probably also put a um, infantry gun here. Just in case there's a lot of infantry. That would hate to help to, to take them out pretty nicely. And let's just deploy it here, just like the anti-tank gun. And then we'll move it after we've we've done that. So we have the anti-tank gun there. This is going to be a good reinforcement location. So I'm already thinking about this, this forest here. And doesn't quite work. Doesn't quite have a good line of sight. So not this one. So 110 points left. Let's have a look. What's, what's looking good? What's looking not so good? So plenty of infantry on this side. We do have the, the Panzer Shrek over here. One anti-tank gun up on this hill for this road. One anti-tank gun here, which covers both roads. One anti-tank gun here, which covers this road and this road. So really, my only unprotected road would be this one then, right? So maybe I can just put a, a Panzer Shrek in the building here, or even just into the forest here would uh, also do the job, I think. Just as a kind of, it's like a kind of fail safe. It's, it's 20 points to make sure that my opponent isn't going to, to bring tanks down here, because if they do, phew, goes the rocket, bye bye goes the tank. And then to prevent my my Panzer Shreks from dying to normal infantry squads, I'll probably put another infantry squad in here as well, uh, just to protect them. So let's put a Jakari. Jakari. Maybe a Ratsuvaki. Let's do Kivari. <clears throat> they are cheaper. And I don't care about them so much. This is more of a kind of fail-safe going on here. Okay, 70 points. So I'll bring a Bath C for this forest here. Now I like these, these Bath Cs in the forest. Moving through the light forest, you get one infantry squad going up here, one infantry squad going up here, the Bath C going up here, and any of the infantry squads that are kind of in this zone here, you know, the Bafsi can support. And uh, if there are any half tracks, maybe over here, it can also provide that role too, which is nice. Okay, and let's see, what have we got left? So we've got one Panzer Shrek, maybe another Panzer Shrek into the forest here. Or maybe another infantry squad just to go and sit over here. Or 
or maybe an anti-infantry gun here to stop any infantry there. That would be nice. Let's do that. Yep, come over to here. 15 points left. I guess I could buy a T26. Let's let's send the T26 into the forest here and let's see if that that does anything. Very slow. It's going to be arriving pretty late. Let's just place it there. Let's see how this goes. Oh, I didn't put it on very hard AI, did I? That's okay. Let's just see. You see immediately the the motorbike units pulling ahead of the other trucks thanks to their superior speed. Okay, there's a bolt here. Some trucks there. I think the sniper is going to get some hits here. Yep. Very fast units here. There we go. There's down. There's one down. Infantry units in the open here. So this was a good choice. Let's bring him out into the open. So he can get that line of sight. There we go. Now I can shoot these infantry here. Okay, the Kavari also helping here. Good. So this is a nice counter to this infantry here. Yep, the sniper taking out the the Maxim there. Let's take the Ratsuvaki out. Oh dear, what was that? That looks like uh, an SU-152. So just moving my infantry. Jakari is going to move up. Ratsuvaki out to the building here. Move the Kivari up. So if this SU-152 now comes down this road... This Panzer Shrek is going to take care of him nicely. We'll take this Lati and tell him to go on to return fire. SU-152 goes out that way. Let's send this one out here. This one too. The anti-tank gun doesn't quite have a line of sight. So let's get this one to, to fall back. I put him out into the open a little bit too much. Okay. T-3476. T Guess the turret's stuck. It's a little bit too close range for this. I don't know why he's moving. Okay, just shoot instead of moving all the time. That was a bit silly. You have to move 20 meters away from the fire. Okay. So this T-34 now is going to get cross-fired by these two. There's a penetration. Move these Kavari up. And this means I can probably advance here if I would like. Take these back into the forest. Move these two guys up. Secure that objective. Make sure that's supporting. Move those guys into the forest there. And we can move this one up to support too. Okay, this is fine. Uh, put the Kavari here. Jakari go down there. These Jakari go there. This Bafsi goes here. Let's bring another Jakari here. So you, you, you. Let's bring the the other anti-tank gun to this location here, like I wanted. Let's bring another one here. Let's bring some more infantry into the forest. Because it looks like there's something happening here. And maybe another Panzer Shrek. Let's put the Ratsuvaki on the edge of the forest, see if we can move the 
Okay, at least the car are gonna deal with this just fine, I think. Yep. Let's see if we can move these guys up into this forest. Use a T26 to support. Okay, these Jakari can move up again. This one can move into the building. And we'll send some more infantry here as well. Let's send uh, Kivari over here. Another... Put a Bafsi in here as well. And we will also put... I guess we'll put an anti-tank gun here, because they like coming down this road, it looks like. Let's see, can we... We do get a reasonable light of sight onto this road here as well. Let's put one in here. Let's unload him and send him to here. Put this one into this forest. This one can advance here. We can advance here. We can advance here. And they go up. The supports. This is not enough, so we'll also bring another Ratsuvaki and another Jakari here, and we'll support them with a leader as well. Okay, so this gun can come in to help here. He can fall back because he's not really doing much at the moment. And I can probably use some rocket planes on these tanks here, so let's let's buy some of those. So this one here, you can see it, this one here. Oh, lost line of sight, let's bring them back. Don't want them to fire for nothing. So it's being patient here. They might take the objective, but we, we can wait. We can wait for that. And we'll send another infantry unit here anyway. There we go. Now they're reversing out. We can send the planes back for their bombing run. Unload this one so it doesn't get shot. It does have line of sight. I think the rocket planes will do the job anyway. In they go. Pew pew pew. Send you back. Send you back. Okay, good. Two dead T-34s. Let's bring this one out to here as well. And let's bring him to about here. Okay, that's fine there. He can advance to there. This influence line says you can advance, so let's advance. Put him in there, bring him up to here. These guys can advance too. In fact, all of them can advance to there. This one can advance. And some more infantry in here. Maybe let's just put a leader in here as well. Okay, that's fine. This side is fine. This is a bit of a bulge here, so let's bring the Bafsi up. Let's bring the Jakari up as well. Ratsuvaki to here. Ratsuvaki to here. Bring up the Panzer Shrek. This one to here. This one is fine. That's fine. Let's put it there. He can advance into these buildings even. Let's try that. Let's bring another Jakari in here, just for safety. And here is the... Wolf just finished firing before I could place the beacon. It was about there. Let's try bombing that. Let's see how that goes. Okay, he got caught out by the Gaz AA. We can deal with that quite easily with a Baf C. So let's take that up. Let's move the Kavari here. This is fine. Let's advance here and here. Him into the forest there. Let's put him there as a safety. Him into the forest here. You also into the forest here. Let's see how this side is doing. Okay, let's bring the Jakari out to help with that. You two. You two. Okay, you go here. There's something here, obviously. We're a bit thin here now, because we've been fighting, but that's okay. We've actually won a lot of territory. 
he comes down into the forest here. And him too. He can stay on the edge of the building there. You don't need to go that way anymore. You can shoot at things that come down the road. You don't want to be shot by him, so you can fall back. You can come up here too. You are fine there. That is... That is the SE-152. Let's double rocket play and see how that goes. It's going to shoot my Lati now. Bye bye Lati, I'm sorry. You missed. Oh, can't see it anymore. Let's get these guys to fall back. I need to waste. Okay, come here. Where is that SU-152? Okay, this is going to take out the gas. You can come here. You go there to support. You come here too. You come to give that nice leader bonus. You come into the forest. You are fine there. You can advance a little bit. You into the forest. You there for support. You there as too. Okay, that worked out just fine. Didn't get my Kavari into that one there. Let's see if we can get it this time. So what is pushing this influence line here. Let's bring Jakari here and the... Okay, that's taken care of. Didn't quite get the line of sight with this Baf C. He didn't do what I wanted him to do. SU-76. Who wins this fight? SU-76 wins this fight. Let's leave the Hands of Shrek here. Let's put the Jakari down here. Okay, I think he can be seen. Okay, just stop. Yep. Bring this one up here too. Let's replace the, the bath C. And let's... That's okay, I think. Let's move this Kivari up to here. Okay, you guys... No, 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 no. Not you, not you. Okay. So although there are like a couple of tanks in here, we don't need to, to do something about them right now. We are winning fairly handily. And as soon as they kind of reveal themselves, then we can make them go bye-bye. Like this. Okay, we're in B phase now, so we can bring these 122 millimeter uh, guns. Let's bring... Let's bring one into here. Let's see how that goes. Wow, both of these guys didn't do anything, huh? Okay, let's put the Jakari into the forest. Let's, don't want to advance this ahead of these guys. So let these guys go into the forest. Check there's no infantry there. Do need to reinforce this area. Let's put a Ratsu Pioneeri. And a Ratsuvaki. Let's bring the Panzer Shrek up this way, and we should be able to get this SU-76. There we go. Pew. Okay, and now we'll advance the Jakari into the forest here. Put this one here. That one's very low strength, so is this one. So they're just going to stay as a kind of back line. I mean, that's why we're bringing more infantry. He is 8 health. We could probably put another Ratsuvaki here and run him up. The anti-infantry gun has been lost on this side, so we can replace that. Let's put it here. Still got the double sniper. This is held reasonably well. I can move forwards a little bit. And put another Baf C up here as well. 
And although these infantry, you know, they can advance into the forest, it doesn't matter. I know I'm going to win the engagement anyway. That's fine there. Let's move the Ratsuvaki up to the edge. This is a reserve. So if I do lose any of these two Jukari, I still have some more in the back. There we go. Afto Michiki. So they're getting shot before they can even arrive. But let's just move the Ratsuvaki to support as well. And we can move the Jukari down. And we're sure to win that engagement then. So what have we got here? We've got a couple of infantry squads. Not sure how far they're going to get. Okay, you unload and you're going up here. This is going to unload, I think, actually just here. And then we'll start shooting these infantry. We can use one of our Blenums on this Gavardia DP. We can use another one on this M42. Not because I need to, just because I have the points and I can. Let's use a JU-88 on the Saperi going into this forest here. So because they're moving, I'm not targeting the, the unit, I'm going to target the actual forest. Let's target there because they're moving. Let's move the Baf C up here. And now that we've got some Ratsuvaki, we move them up, move them up there. Kivari, I wanted you to come down here. And these guys can come back because these are not supposed to be on the front line. They're just for killing tanks and stuff. There's the SU. So can we kill this SU before it disappears? There's another one. Don't know what they can see. It's this Ratsuvaki unit. And they disappear again before I can see them. Shame. Send these bombers back. Oh, they always disappear before we can see them. And it's over anyway. So much quicker. 16 minutes. But it was only hard AI. It's over quickly because we're we're taking advantage quickly of the the mistakes that the AI makes and we're advancing when we can advance. But because it was so fast, I'll just I'll do it again against very hard AI because it does get that that extra income, it does get that extra um availability. And we'll see if that, that makes much of a difference. So do we get the same side? Nope, we get the other side, the side that I like. So again, we'll just do the anti-tank guns into the, the nice open areas. So this one... About... Here. Uh, on the hill here. Okay, and we'll go to about there. Now look, we, we could go right to the edge of the hill here, right? But right here is exposed to everything. We could actually deploy sooner and still be able to utilize the, the range that it can use, which is 1500, right? So I'm looking for 1500 on this road here while also placing it into the forest, which is about here, right? So let's do that. Let's place one there. This side, we could put a sniper into the forest here and maybe get some of the transports that come down there. So there's the sniper, and let's put you about there. On this, uh, let's look for okay, the church for the sniper as well. Love that church. Yes. This one we won't get anything good for anti-tank guns. This has to be Panzer Shreks. This open area here. Can't really get the range onto the roads that we want. Can use this one here though, which is really nice. 
So we'll place another anti-tank gun into the back of this forest here. And then for this road here, I guess we could use this, but it's not fantastic. That's a little bit too close to the town for an anti-tank gun. Easy to assault it and take it out. So I think I'm just going to go with those those three anti-tank guns for this start. Let's put a bunch of infantry into the forests again. So again, the two two Jakari, one Ratsuvaki, two Jakari, one Ratsuvaki. Grab them. Deploy right there. And these three deploy right here. Maybe a Lati here, definitely some Panzer Shreks here. And the same over here. Let's do the two Jakari Ratsu Jakari Ratsu. Okay, and you guys deploy into this forest here. You guys deploy into the forest here. Get one Kavari into the far into the buildings here or here. One into the forest here. So Kivari one. Forest Kivari Building. This one. Mm -hmm. Kinda want to make sure we hold this objective. This one is fine because we have the infantry going here anyway. So yeah, I guess that'll do fine. Maybe something in these buildings here. That would be a Kivari as well. Because it's cheap and easy to replace. Let's put him there. One here too. So these are my... I want to try and hold this thing, but I don't want to waste one of my good units. And I could even... Maybe... No, I think if I'm going to get a sniper, then probably this is the best place here. So sniper, looking for that line of sight, but also looking close to the road. So where's the closest? Like, that looks good. And so we've got the three infantry. We can get a Baf C going down here like we did before. Okay, down to there. We're going to bring the two Panzer Shreks. One for each forest, so one for in here, one for in here, and we'll do the same on the other side too. One, two, one to go in here, and one to go in here, and we could bring as well another Bathsy onto the left side of the forest, onto this hill here. Okay, so we have anti-tank gun, anti-tank gun. Sometimes there's infantry here. What about an anti-infantry gun? This might be okay for that. This might be better. Oh, this might be even better. Tough choice. Sniper in this forest could probably do the same thing against infantry here or here anyway. So let's try that. Let's. It's nice to try new things. Let's say go and deploy here, just like the Kavari. 45 points. One anti tank, one sniper. I mean, I guess one anti tank gun even. No, this wouldn't work well because it can't see into this road. This could work okay, like this, but it's difficult to get to. This heavy forest here might just do it better anyway. So why don't we try there? Let's try there. We do have enough points for one more. Okay, so let's deploy him into the forest about here. We can move him after that. Okay, let's go. 
let's see if the the extra availability and income for the AI makes it a bit a bit longer. So the the question, what is the attention and decision making loop that goes on during a battle? Like we look, we pay attention to the the influence line, and have a look. We can see there are some slight bends in it, and you know this generally tells you where enemies are going to be generally. Not exactly. Let's move him. Okay, so units here. Sniper's going to get those. Sniper's going to get these ones. Take these guys out. Yeah, good. So this one is going to take out these vehicles. He's in range for that one as well. You move up. You move up as well. To about there. You've got good line of sight anyway. Okay, this is taking on the infantry. We'll move the Kavari up. So we're just going around now. We're moving our units while we can. Because usually when we deploy them, they're not really where we you know exactly want them to be. What was that? What plane was that? There's some mortars going down. So one Jakari goes up here. One Jakari goes into the forest here. Ratsuvaki comes to support. One Jakari goes over there. One Jakari goes in there. Bafsi comes here to support. That's shooting at something. Maybe my sniper. Let's move the sniper back. Yep, it was shooting at my sniper. He is not quite in position. We want him kind of there, right? He needs to move forwards a bit to something like this. Lost my Kavari in the buildings there. Lots of tanks here cl clumped together means a nice bombing run by these rocket planes should do a good job. These Ratsuvaki can stay there. These guys go into the forest here. These guys come up behind. You are just going to go down this road because you're doing a great job. No, I take it back. Where did we lose a unit? So we lost this anti-tank gun. These guys can fall back now. Took out those tanks nicely. And when we get some points, we were going to buy another anti-tank gun to go there. We still have this one as the, the backup. So we're going to put another infantry unit, let's say here. We'll see if we can get these guys forwards a bit. They can stay there. Anti-tank gun goes in the back here again. Okay, that's fine. You go into this building. You're going down here. You're going to help with that. You're coming into here. Need some Ratsuvaki up here to support that. Check the other side of the map. Let's advance these guys. And the, the Baf C2. Ratsuvaki come up as well. Get these guys up. And let's see. Let's put another Baf C in here. Some tanks coming down this way. This pack 38 will take care of them in some ways. And in others, not so much. But we still have another tank. Anti-tank plane here. That's okay. So you come down here. Okay, you can go into the forest. Okay, Ratsavaki should be able to take care of this. Good. And I'm going to win this one as well. This is a bit of a problem because they're coming down not on the road. But we do have the Kavari in the building there. Anyway, these guys are coming. You unload. I'm just going to go in these buildings here. Okay. You can now move to about there. Okay, I think he's probably targeting this Baf C, right? Yep, does have the, the range. Please miss that first shot. Try and get him out of the, the way so he can't get shot again. Good. With these Kavari here. They're supporting well. You go here as well. 
Okay, this is fine. Oh boy. That's dead. Lost my sniper in the church. We can replace that with a sissy. This is taking out these tanks here. Let's take out the, the one at the back with a rocket plane. Kavari versus these Ognomachiki are doing okay. Don't know why this sniper isn't firing, because he can't see, that's why. Okay, how about this side? So PTRS against my Baf C. Do get to kill the Baf C, unfortunately. Which means I need more infantry over this side. Let's take one and one. Make sure we bring him up on the side as well. And this one into here. Good. See if they can spot anything. Bring these guys up too. Let's put another Kivari in the building here. Okay. Shall we bring those to support? Bring this one. Yeah, bring the Bafsi in here as well. Put one Jakari on the side there, one there. Bring the Ratsuvaki into the forest. Let's bring another Ratsuvaki into this forest here. Bring the Panzer Shrek up. I think he should be fine deploying there. Okay. Yeah, two anti-tank guns on the T-3476 here. This is good positioning. This is definitely harder with the, the extra um, availability they get, right? It's okay. Let's bring another Jakari here. Damn, lost the, the driver there, unfortunately. Couldn't quite get him into the forest. It's okay. Let's put him on the edge here. Is there something hiding in the building here? This influence line tells me something here, yep. So let's... Let's bring these guys back. Let's buy a bomber, and let's just bomb this. Let's put something in the forest here. See it advancing a little bit too much for my liking. Okay, so these Jakari come up to here. They don't have any cocktails left. Let's just put them on the right side there. You one's in the forest. You on the edge. You come up to the building here. You come up to the edge here. Okay, you come back now. That should be fine with this side shot. Yep, there's one. Bring the Bafsi out a little bit. And let's... Yep, there's a Ratsuvaki. Let's bring a leader into here. And let's see if we can take out these tanks with these rocket planes. So that our anti-tank guns don't lose too much health. Make sure these guys fall back. Bring another Bafsi into here. There's the Jakari. Let's just get these guys to unload here. Advance into here. And we'll bring another one just in case. Okay, so you come over to the forest that way. You come down there. You can get into the building. You stay here. Okay, you go over there. So probably anti-infantry gun over here would be nice. And the same into this forest here. You can fall back. SU-152 coming down the road there. ZSU M17. Can use the bath seat to take that out maybe. Or the anti-tank guns will get a shot soon. Okay. It's going okay, it's still a 15-9. Might be able to push a little bit on this objective. But not many units left here, so let's see. What's what's at the edge of this forest here? What's hiding? Vardia and a sniper, but Jakari should win this. Yep. 
There we go. Good. That's cleared. Can we see where the mortar is firing from? It stopped already. Okay. Okay, so out come the SU-152s. What we're going to do is we're going to tell these guys to return fire. We're not going to fire just yet. We're going to let the SU-152s get a little bit closer. And we'll put a anti-infantry gun in here, and we'll put a sissy in here too. Yep, you unload, you come out to here. Okay. Bring him to the edge here. This Ratsavaki can move forwards a little bit. Could probably move one of these Jakari round to the right, to there, and then to there. So let's shift order that. Let's move. Damn it. And you, you move here. Okay. Okay, we've got some more units because it's in B phase. What unit is that? It's it's going to be the IL two, right? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. No big deal. Okay. There's the ISU-152s. Let's see if we can get some nice, easy kills with the rocket planes. Okay, so... Fall back, so you're not taking damage for nothing, and fall back, same reason. Let's reinforce up here with two more line infantry probably gonna do the same here do have one here already you unload you can come out to about there okay make sure they fall back not just flying around for nothing some unit is advancing by itself down here and it's kind of given up this this town here so if we move a unit in here we'll get a couple of objectives for free move this one to the edge here jakari support with the baf c bring a ratsu or two down this way okay okay here advance the and you are going to be on return fire too. So they're advancing now, but we're not shooting at them just yet. Because we want to let them get a bit closer. You know, we'll buy a couple of PE2s to take care of these. Let's use a Blenheim. Where is that? Oh, I missed the mortar again. Let's see how this goes. Okay, one away, one dead. One away. One dead. Blenheim. Fall back. He's a little bit too suppressed for me to want to use him. Just missed the mortar again. And let's use the JU-88 on this. Okay, move these guys forwards on this side here. Yeah. You there, you in the back. Make sure we bring these guys up. We're gonna need a couple more anti-infantry squads against these Saperis. Panzer Shrek can come up here too. Make sure these guys go off away from this tank. Same for this one. And we can probably use a bomber on these infantry okay that didn't do much let's try the rocket plane onto this one too okay these guys can move forwards and over here you unload you're gonna sit there you can move up a bit bombs away you can now fire on the T-3485, as it retreats, bomber didn't do anything. Come on, shoot the guy. You can turn off return fire too. 
There goes the T-3485. Got the other two rocket planes available. Bring them in for, in for this T-3085. That bomber suppressed those guys nicely. Bring these guys to the edge to support here. Make sure we've got some more infantry coming in as well. Check the other side. This is going just fine. We even gained this, this town here. So we'll move this guy up as well. I'll put a Ratsuvaki here. Bring this guy up here. Bring the Bafsi to here. Or maybe here even. Go back to the other side. Ratsuvaki is firing on these infantry. Can bring this one here to do the same. Make sure they can't advance for free. And we can even use another bomber. Let's use a Blenheim on this Gavardia. Because it's in the building. So it's quite defensively you know, strong there. Okay, this is fine. Fine here. Fine on this side. There's another target that we can bomb. Blenheim. Shoot that thing. These guys, come down here. So it's a T-3485, might get the Panzerfaust, doesn't, so you fall back. Because this is bombing here, so we're getting suppressed. No big deal. Make sure we bring the, the Panzer Shrek over to that side. And the Ratsuvaki over here. You stay inside the forest. Gain this one just fine. That's a problem. Let's take a rocket plane, which we don't have available yet. So, we just... Nope was about to make him fall back, but he can't. Okay, he has fallen back, so let's just go back here. Okay, Ratsu Pioneer here, Ratsu Pioneer here. You fall back. You come up here. You get back a little bit. You go to the edge. That's fine. Make sure we get some more line infantry here as well. Maybe a uh, Baf C would be nice. Okay, got a rocket plane available now. Lost an anti-tank gun, unfortunately. Let's bring the the good one out here. So what did we lose there? That was the Kavari in the building here. Got the driver knocked out there. Blenheim flying around for no reason. This PE-2 is available. This PE-2 is available. That's going to be a bad time for the Ratsu Pioneeri. Just got him out in time. Make sure we have these guys available to bring out if it gets too close. Let's see. Let's bring some more CQC infantry into that building there. Some into the forest here. Okay, they can fall back. Okay, bring those there. Bring some more Ratsuvaki into the forest here. Put the good anti-tank gun on the hill here. Maybe see if we can get some infantry into that forest there. So let's, let's deploy a Ratsuvaki here. Okay, you don't need to return fire. You can shoot. That's fine. You move to about there. Okay, Ratsuvaki to here. Ratsuvaki to here. These guys just fall back. Right there. That's going to get bombed. No more mortar for you. Bad AI, bad. Do we have infantry coming up on the left side? We do. Let's put the Baf C in the forest here. Okay. No problems here. Okay, that's a good bombing target. Let's take the Blenheim. Shoot these Sapiri here. Or well, maybe just bomb this place here. Let's take another one. And let's bomb these guys here. Let's take two of these rocket planes and shoot the T-3485. Okay. 
bombs away. Bombs away again. There's one boom. Here comes the second boom. Oof. Oof. Let's put... Yeah, we can move this one forward now. Sniper's taking out those superior just fine. See if we can move these Ratsuvaki down to the forest here. Row another... Another one of these 122s. Two Let's put it on this left side here. This is covered okay. Okay, let's see if we can move these guys up here. This one here. Him here. Him into here. Him here. Bring that one up to support. What are we losing? That was the sniper to these tanks here, I guess. Yep. Okay, these guys fall back. Let's see if we can bomb that thing. It's annoying. Looks like we might be able to move some infantry across here, though. So let's see. Can we move the Jakari into that forest? And some Retsuvaki there. Some Retsuvaki into that building there. They need to fall back. Okay. So, we do have another rocket plane available now from C phase. Let's use it on that T-3485. See if we can get this this guy to shoot the T-3485. Bring him here. Okay, I guess I didn't click there. You can just fall back. Yep, you're gonna come out to about here. So even though they're pushing, you know, because we have the, the built-up defenses, they they kill units and they advance a little bit, but not enough to take back what they lost. So it's a little bit longer. It's 22 minutes this time. Um, 32 versus 800 is still AI. The real difficulty is, like, they have so many of one kind of unit that for Rapana, at least, is difficult to deal with, which is, is tanks. You know, if there are so many tanks... You don't actually have that many, you know, anti-tank guns to take care of it. And while you do have the the rocket planes, you know, they're limited. You send them out, they fire, they have to go back. You have to wait for them to reload. And, you know, once you get to the very hard and hardest AI, the, the AI actually has more tanks than you have bullets in some kinds of ways, you know. So it, it can be difficult to deal with in that in that sense. So the, the easiest way to gain the advantage is right at the start when the points are most equal, shall we say. Both teams start with 750 points of deployment. If you gain that advantage at the start, you gain those objectives, you make the, the bar tick down. You know, you can then, you know, even if the AI starts pushing back and they are losing less, so to speak, they've still already lost enough points that you're still going to win in a few minutes at a at a 13-11, you know? So that was definitely harder than hard, so I'm glad I, I did it again. Um, these snipers, great kills. So the anti-tank gun here with uh, four T-3476s. This sniper again, great kills. Two tanks for that rocket plane. One, two, three, four, five tanks and a T-3485 with this one. Sniper again, rocket planes. Nice. Baf C with two half tracks. This Jakari with two T thirty four eighty fives. I didn't see that happen, but I guess that was just good positioning. The PE two SU one five two, PE two with the SU one five two. 
the ju88 yes killed two mortars with this ju88 that was with the the beacon you know watching for the the muzzle flash place the beacon and then just send a bomber to wherever that beacon is and there we go we got two two mortar kills which are really annoying along with a um supply truck so that was a good choice i think so that's how we do it although you know in this case we are kind of making it really hard for ourselves playing Rapana in this kind of situation because they they it is a very hard division to play but at least it's in some ways equal when your opponent has the same amount of units as you and same amount of points but ai very hard they get more points over time than you and they get more quantity of units something like at least 25 percent more units than they would usually get so they can keep spamming these these tanks which can put you in a situation that can be quite difficult to deal with if you're not very very careful and uh, knowledgeable about where to place your units so if i just go over the the questions again you know the attention and decision making loop is i mean at least for me we we divide the map into three or four parts and we we just go check is everything okay here is it thin does something need replacing replace it next part what about this do the same thing next part do the same thing if something is being shot at that you know can't return fire make it fall back make it just move back a bit so it can't be shot um, if you see units coming that you don't have an immediate counter for buy that counter deploy it in a safe location where you can then bring it to bear in a, the correct way um, making sure that a certain part of the map is stable just means that you're not trying to defend with half strength units once a unit is, is damaged or down to half health, that means you replace it. Even if it's still alive, you replace it. And most of the time, with those units, I just keep them back as a reserve. And I, they're not at the front line anymore. They're just there to hold the influence line. Uh, if the main line somehow dies from something, there's still something there at least holding the line. And um, you can't leave them alone. You're always checking. Check one side, check the middle, check the right side, repeat. And you're constantly cycling. You're not leaving anything alone. Or if you are leaving it alone while you do that, you're leaving it alone because you've placed the units into the correct positions where they will immediately counter whatever comes into their sight and range. So if you're leaving the middle where it's open and you have anti-tank guns covering those roads, you can leave it for a few seconds while you do that. If you're trying to leave the forest on one side of the map to go look at something else, you have CQC infantry units in the heavy forest. You have line infantry or support vehicles covering the light forest. And so you know if something comes into that area, you know, I have something to cover it. But we're never really leaving it for a long time. We're always cycling. And where, when to reinforce, just according to the terrain. So when it's an open terrain, we know we need those long range units. We need the anti-tank guns for vehicles and armored vehicles. And we need the, the snipers and the anti-infantry guns and the, the 122 millimeter does that as well to cover those soft targets to stop infantry from advancing because one sniper probably won't stop seven infantry units running down the field. And for the, the CQC areas, that just means having infantry and vehicles covering the right kinds of places and lines of sight. So that's that's it. That's the the review of the replay, the trying the same thing against hard and then very hard AI. Very hard was very hard, to be honest. Um, I can feel my heart racing a little bit. Well, not racing, but definitely beating a bit faster. Still won fairly quickly, though. And with a, a good score. But that's the thing about the, the very hard AI. It can afford to throw away so many units and still be doing okay because it gets that, that income bonus and that unit availability bonus. But um, that's going to be it for, for this video, Bobby. Uh, very much uh, big thanks for the support on Patreon. And for anyone else that would like to, again, I'm going to put the, the link in the description of the video. If that's something you'd be interested in, and feel free to contact me. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and come back next time.